Howdy y'all, back again with another video. Today we're going to be learning dividing polynomials by a binomial. So we've done dividing at the beginning of this unit. We uh, practiced dividing polynomials by a monomial, and now we're going to practice dividing polynomials by a binomial, which unfortunately changes the entire method. So um, good news is this is the last topic in this unit, and if you know how to factor, then this one's a breeze. So let's go ahead and get started. Of course, we start off with some steps here. So step one, you're going to factor the numerator. So the numerator, that's going to be the top portion here. You're going to factor that. So if you look at this trinomial, this is a basic trinomial. The leading coefficient is just one. You notice it starts with x squared. There's no number in front of that. So we get right to it here. We figure out what multiplies to negative 8 but adds to 7. Okay, so I'm just going to, I know I'm going to have x as one factor, and then another x here. And then I'm going to have a positive number and a negative, right? Because I have to get negative 8. Positive times a negative gives me the negative 8. So I could have 1 times 8. That might be my money combo already. So let's see, if I make the 1 negative, negative 1 and a positive 8, there you go. That works. So positive 8, negative 1. If you're hearing that in the background, that's a massive rainstorm going on right now. It's crazy. All right, step two. This is my favorite step. It's really fun. So if you divide anything by itself, you just get one, right? So if you have common factors, like in this case, if you have x minus one times an x minus one, if you divide those, they just become one. So they essentially go away. So goodbye. Your final answer is x plus Eight. Isn't that so cool? So you're just left with that. Okay, let's practice a few of these. So number one, you are going to factor the numerator here. So again, I don't have to use slip and slide because this is just a basic trinomial. The leading coefficient is one. So I go get right to it. What multiplies, so I, I like to set my, my factors up here. I know x squared is going to give me the x and the x. And then if you look, I've got a positive 21, but a negative 10x. So something needs to multiply to the positive 21, but add to the negative. So these two have to be negative. A negative times a negative will give you that positive. So let's go through the factors of 21. 1 times 21, that's not going to work. Uh, negative 3, negative 7, money. There we go. So 3... 7, they're both negative because I need the negative 10 derived from that, so that works. Bring down your denominator, x minus 7. Now look at your step 2. You're going to cancel out your common factors. I've got an x minus 7 down here, an x minus 7 up there. Goodbye. When you divide them, they just become 1. So x minus 3 times 1 is just x minus 3. You don't need to put that in parentheses. I don't know why I did. It's not wrong if you do. But it's just unnecessary. All right, so I, I am skipping around here because I want to show you guys different types of factoring problems because there's a, they're all mixed throughout um, throughout these notes here. So when I look at something like number three, I don't have a trinomial anymore, right? So you have to recognize what kind of factoring problem this is. First of all, you're always looking for a GCF. If there's no GCF, you get right to factoring. So what I recognize here is a difference of perfect squares. So I'm going to factor this out to be, oops, I don't need to do it up there, to be y plus 5, y minus 5. Remember, you take the square root of both of these, and that's how you get that. And then bring down your denominator, y plus 5. Step 2, my favorite step, goodbye. All you're left with here is this guy y minus 5. All right, number 4. Again, I'm skipping around because I want to make sure I do one of each type of problem here. So if I look at the numerator, I don't know what I have here. I don't have a trinomial, but I also don't have a difference of perfect squares. So first of all, let's look at our GCF. Do you have a GCF? And, and in here you do, right? You can take out a 2x. So 2x when I take a 2x, let me write it out here. So I have 2x squared plus 16x. 
find that GCF and take it out. So 2x, 2x. That goes away. I'm just left with an x. And then this becomes 8, and those x's go away, plus 8. Check it out. We're left with that x plus 8. That's perfect. Divide it all by the denominator. Step 2, my favorite, goes away. Your final answer here is just this 2x. Ooh, that rain is coming down. You guys can probably hear it in the background. All right, so number five, we have a trinomial. There's no GCF, so guess what, guys? We are going to slip and slide here. So circle him, slip him over, rewrite him right there. He goes away here. First of all, you don't care about that denominator at all right now, so you could just kind of make that go away and focus on what you need to factor in the numerator. Bring down that basic trinomial here. So x squared plus 5x minus 24. Remember, you need to come back to this guy. So put a square around him, star him. Do something that remember that helps you remember you got to come back to him. Factor this basic trinomial. So x is going to be one of my factors. Or those are the factors of x squared. And then I'm going to have a positive and a negative here. So 1 times 24, not going to give me a 5. 2 and 12, still not going to give me a 5. 3 and 3 and 8, that can give me a 5, right? If I make the 3 a negative and the 8 a positive, money. Make this 3 negative, make the 8 positive. There's my two factors, and I'm not even close to being done. Remember, you got to come back to this guy. Slide by 2 by 2. Reduce your fractions. You cannot forget to reduce your fractions. x plus 8 divided by 2, that's going to give me 4. And then x, oh, hold on. Let's, this is already reduced. 3 halves is good. So let's slide this up. Ooh, that's thunder in the background. 2x minus 3. Okay, now don't forget about the denominator now. This was a division problem in the beginning, not just a factoring problem. So I need to divide it by 2x minus 3, and that's really handy. Check it out. In the numerator, I also have a 2x minus 3. Goodbye. Your final answer, believe it or not, after all that work, your final answer is just x plus 4. How cool is that? Okay. I wanted to do number 9 for you, even though you guys will probably think this one's easy, um, because it's written different. It's written differently. So this division, just rewrite it and make that go away if that's confusing to you. It's, it's confusing to me. I don't know why they do it like that, but sometimes they do, and on the SOL, they might do that. So I want you to recognize that this is the same thing. Okay, so rewrite it like I did if you want. You can put this in parentheses too if you need to. It doesn't matter. Okay, and then we get right to it. So here's a hint. I'm going to reveal this to you guys at the very end of the video. Normally, 99% of the time, this factor on the bottom, this denominator, is going to be one of the factors on the top. Okay, so 99% of the time, this C minus 3 is going to cancel out at the end of the problem, and it's going to go away which means when you're factoring the c squared plus 8c minus 33, one of your factors is probably going to be c minus 3. So if you want to work backwards from that negative 3, you can. It, it might save you time, right? You can just think, okay, negative 3 times what gives me negative 33? Negative 3 times 11. So there you go. You know you're going to have an 11 right there. Okay, so you can work backwards for these type of problems. You're 99% of the time, that C minus three is gonna be one of your factors. Okay, so that's just a hint. I'll go ahead and finish this problem off. C minus three, mm, goodbye, goes away. Final answer, C plus 11. All right, that was kind of a short video. It went by way too fast for me. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I enjoyed making this video. I apologize for the lightning and thunder in the background. My dog is literally hiding in the fireplace right now, totally freaked out. It's really coming down out there. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Finish all those notes, please. Bye.